Canine Enterotomy Surgery with Emergency Fluid CRI and Pain Management CRI by Medina Regalia at Tarleton State University. This presentation follows a surgical case study of a dog that underwent an enterotomy where pain needed to be managed by post-operative drugs, which includes a CRI. Also included is a fluid CRI when the animal in the study became hypotensive and required a colloid to increase the blood pressure. Signalment and history. Delilah is a spayed four-year-old mixed breed dog. Her owner states she is on a store brand dog food, but does have the ability to run freely on their farm. Their other dog is not experiencing any symptoms, but Delilah has been vomiting and experiencing inappetence for at least two days. The owner noted that her vomit no longer contains food, but is blood tinged. She is current on all of her vaccinations and flea and heartworm prevention. Physical exam and assessment. Delilah's weight is stable from the last time she was seen. Due to the pain in her abdominal region, her respiratory rate, heart rate, and temperature are all elevated. She also was markedly dehydrated, which started to cause her mucous membranes to become ectric and tacky. Initial treatment plans. A crystalloid shock protocol was initiated due to the fact Delilah went into shock directly following her examination. A radiograph of her abdominal region was ordered once she was stabilized. Blood pressure crashing. While receiving fluids, Delilah's blood pressure did not improve, so the DVM temporarily discontinued the isotonic fluids and placed her on the colloid of HEDA starch. She received a bolus dose and then continued maintenance therapy until stable. On screen, you can see her daily requirements and maintenance calculations. Calculating the CRI dose of HEDA starch. Listed on screen is the CRI dosage of the HEDA starch fluid therapy that Delilah received. Since Delilah is NPO, the doctor has ordered 20 milli equivalents per liter of potassium chloride. On screen, you can see her fluid deficit calculated at 33 mils per hour, her maintenance dose is 34 mils per hour, and her total increase of 25% of HEDA starch puts her at 50 mils per hour. Radiograph findings. After a few hours, Delilah's blood pressure stabilized and she was able to have the radiographs of her abdominal region. Exploratory surgery was set up to remove the foreign object found on the x-rays. Surgery. The surgery required the bowel to be exteriorized and the foreign body was identified as a corn cob. Unfortunately, due to the length of time the object was in her bowel, 15 centimeters needed to be resected due to necrosis. The bowel ends were sutured back using a single layer, snug, appositional, continuous suture pattern. The bites are 3 millimeters apart and 3 millimeters from the cut edges. Before releasing the luminal occlusion, the integrity of the suture line was tested by the injection of sterile saline. The abdomen was closed and the surgery was without complications. Postoperative therapy, fluids and pain management CRI. Postoperatively, Delilah is to receive isotonic fluids and lidocaine for pain control. On screen is her CRI I rate of lidocaine when added to 500 ml bag of LRS. Reasoning behind using lidocaine as an analgesic. Lidocaine was chosen by the DVM due to its relative safety in patients with GI surgery. It also has benefits for procedures that involve excessive nerve trauma and is relatively short acting, so treatment can be discontinued without residual effect. Discharge medications, pain management. After 24 hours, Delilah was discharged and sent home with 100 milligrams Rimadyl to be given once a day for seven days. The owner was instructed to observe for any diarrhea or vomiting and call immediately should these side effects appear. She has a scheduled one week follow-up to assess her healing. Discharge medications, antibiotics. 
In addition to pain medications, Delilah will also be on an antibiotic. The DVM has chosen Batril for her to ensure post-surgical infection does not occur. She is sent home with a prescription for 22.7 mg tablets to be, to be given BID. Follow-up exam and reassessment. Delilah returned in one week and the owner reported that she is now eating normally and playing again. Her surgical incision is healing properly and all her vitals are within normal limits. The owner reports that they have now sectioned off a safe area for the dogs to play so they cannot get into the feed from the farm animals. They hope to avoid this situation in the future. Conclusion Any kind of object, whether it's a coin, a hair tie, a piece of trash, can get stuck in an animal's digestive tract and create a blockage. Anything that isn't an organic compound can cause a blockage, even if you think that it is small and won't cause a problem. Once the object becomes lodged within the intestine, it blocks the way for excrement to pass through and little by little until it's full obstruction. In this case, a portion of the intestine was removed, but in more severe cases, animals can become septic or have a ruptured bowel. Obstruction surgeries are costly and often require a pain CRI for these animals to be comfortable.